we have this particle, in this case it's a baseball, and we know we're going to shoot this baseball off at an acceleration you know, defined by that function above. Now if we want to time the whole event, and we know that we've got a path, how can we figure out from the time that that baseball is 2 meters per second, how far the actual baseball travels, as well as how fast it's going to reach the end of that travel. Okay, so let's read this whole thing out. So the acceleration of a particle as it moves along a straight line is given by A equals to 2t minus 1 meter per second squared. So we got the acceleration as a function, where t is in seconds. Now, if s equals 1 meter, s being displacement, and v equals 2 meters per second, v is velocity, when t is equal to 0, so we're starting the clock, and we have a displacement and a velocity, determine the particle's velocity and position when t is 6 seconds. So we want to know what the velocity and the position at 6 seconds are. Also determine the total distance the particle travels during this time period. So we want to look at somewhere from the origin to the end of 6 seconds for the total distance that it travels. So we want to know a displacement during that window of 0 to 6 and we also want to know a total distance of the travel. We also know when we start the clock that the particle is already moving along at 2 meters per second. So let's put up a diagram. Here we have the origin. This is where the thing starts off. This is the path, the straight line. So this is the point where we start the clock. This is where t is equal to 0 seconds. At 0 seconds, uh, this is where the velocity, the initial velocity, is 2 meters per second and we know the displacement at this point is one meter. So we don't know how far it's been, tra or we do know how far it's been traveling, we don't know how far it's going to go. And we also know that we're only concerned about this during a period of six seconds. That's where we don't know what the velocity is, we don't know the total distance, but we do know the acceleration. And we also wanna know what the distance is during that time. So we really want to know how far it goes from the origin and how far it goes from the time we started the clock to the time when it finished. And keep in mind, this window of time that it starts from the clock is going to be really important as we travel through this, this problem. So, okay, let's start off here again. Let's get, what do we have given and what are we really trying to find? Let's put this out explicitly for us. So we have the acceleration. We have a starting time of zero seconds. We got a starting displacement of one meter and we have an initial velocity at zero seconds which is two meters per second and we have a six seconds so we framed it over a period from zero to six seconds now what are we trying to find we're trying to find three things we're trying to find the velocity at six seconds we're trying to find the position at six seconds we're trying to find the total distance traveled at six seconds okay so we're trying to find the time how far it traveled in that window, and we're trying to find the, how far it traveled overall from the time that it was fired off, from the time that it actually started to move. And again, remember that six seconds is gonna play a major part in this in terms of you know separating all of our time. Okay, so we got our, our picture laid out again of the path of, of the particle or the baseball, whatever you wanna think of it as, as how it moved. We've got all of our givens defined and we have our final velocity, you know, what we're actually looking for. So how do we go about finding this? So let's work on just that velocity at this point. Okay, so let's set something up. So we have our velocity. So we know that we've got this function for our acceleration, 2t minus one meters per second squared. So what do we know about acceleration? Well, it is a derivative of velocity with respect to time. So we can set those equal, acceleration, we know is velocity with respect to time, rate of change of velocity with respect to time, and it equals this function. Now, don't worry about the units. I just pulled those off, but you know you can. Uh, I'll bring the units back. You know at the end of the problem. So we have this thing set up in terms of velocity, rate of change of velocity, a differential equation. So if we want to solve this differential equation, we have it as a separable differential equation. Multiply both sides by dt, and we have a boundary here 
okay we're looking at this window between where the clock stops or starts and where the clock stops so that's really important this is where that six second window we're worried about here so we have two definite integrals going from where the clock starts in terms of velocity at two meters per second to the final velocity we have where the clock stops for in terms of time with respect to time velocity with respect to differential time going from when we start the clock zero seconds to whatever that final time is which we know is six seconds and we want to take the integration or take the antiderivative of this function which will give us this function for our velocity so we do our differentiation and, and I have videos as far as the you know if you want to know about definite integration or, or you know, definite integral so that goes from the final velocity and the velocity at two meters per second so we have the difference between those and on the right side of the equation we do our integration which brings us to uh, t equals two squared or t squared minus t we add two to both sides we end up with the final velocity is equal to t squared minus t plus two plug in at uh, six seconds and we end up with a final velocity of 32 meters per second so 32 meters per second is our final velocity all right so now we have a final velocity of what happens when it gets to the end of this path at the end of that six second window all right so now let's find the position at six seconds so again just like we know that velocity or, is or acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time velocity or displacement is the derivative of velocity with respect to time so now we're looking for that position at six seconds you know coming from its origin so we have a function for our velocity that we figured out in our, our last page so it's v equals t squared minus t plus two our velocity is the derivative of displacement with respect to time so we have t squared minus t plus two we set that equal Again, we've got another separable differential equation. And we have a definite integral. In this case, our displacement goes from one meters per second to that final displacement over here. And our time is still is on that six second window. So from zero, and this t is gonna to equal to six seconds. So t is equal to six seconds. We integrate both sides. And I skipped a couple of steps, but we end up with a function. The displacement has a function of one third t cubed minus one half t squared plus two t plus one. So, because we're going from one to the final displacement, added one to both sides, and we end up with this function here. Now we've got everything in terms of time, and we know it's six seconds. So we plug that in, and we end up with a displacement again from its origin of 67 meters so now the last portion of this was the total distance traveled just during the six seconds so all we care about is what's going on from the time we started the clock to the time that we actually brought it to an end just take away that one meter from its origin from where it started off and you end up with the distance equal to 67 minus one meter which just is 66 meters.